I'm going to see these faces one more time out here on these screens. Let's have an igun. And Jeffrey, why don't you rise if you're not already? The Youth Core Prayer is one in which we ask whatever divine force there is to remember our souls and the souls of one who have crossed over. But the ones who are asked to remember really are us. We are asked to remember. Because life moves on and we move on. And not everybody is remembered. Not for their gifts. Not for their laughs. Not for their wisdom. How wise of our ancestors to invite us on this day to stand together and remember and remind ourselves to remember. I expect you've seen the footage. Elephants, finding the bones of one of their own kind, dropped by the wayside, picked clean by scavengers in the sun. Then untidily left there, decide to do something about it. But what exactly? They can't, of course, reassemble the old elephant magnificence. They can't even make a tidier heap. But they can hook up bones with their trunks and chuck them this way and that way. So they do. And their scattering has an air of deliberate ritual, ancient and necessary. Their great size, too, makes them the very embodiment of grief. While the play of their trunks lands satura. Elephants puzzling out the anagram of their own anatomy. Elephants at their abstracted lamentations. May their spirit guide me as I place my own sad thoughts in new hopeful arrangements. Now she 
גדל והתקדש שמי רבה בעלומה דברה חרותי וימליך מלכותי בחיי חון וביומכון ובחיי דחול בית ישראל בעגלה ובזמן קריב ואמרו אמן יהא שמי רבה מבורך לעולם ולעולמי עולמיה יתברך וישתבח ויתפאר ויתרומם ויתנשא ויתהדר ויתעלה ויתהלל שמי תקודשה בריחו לאלה לאלה מן כל ברכתה ושירתה תושבחתה ונחמתה דאמירן בעולמה ואמרו יהא שלמה רבה מן שמיה וחיים טובים עלינו ועל כל ישראל ועל כל יושבי תבל ואמרו אמן עושה שלום במרומיו, הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל ועל כל יושבי תבל, ואמרו אמן. back to our seats for another year of togetherness. If your kids are in uh, any of the lab junior programs, it's a good time to go get them because we're going to go into the final stretch of the morning. What? Yes, yes basically. <sighs> Thank you for rising and standing with us in memory. We're moving into Musaf. 
the added prayer in which we get to chant together our highest hopes for who shall live and who shall die and how. So pause for a moment in quiet. Just close your eyes. Take a few breaths. Ground yourself as we were taught earlier. Deep in the earth, high in the sky. As other people join us back. Please rise. a couple of moments standing in silence if you were here earlier and we thought together about what is my intention for the day there's one thing I want to work on this day this year go back to it now I'll just stand breathing living present Vechen <laughs> Kedushat Hayom Ki 
תינשא מלכותך ויכון בחסד כיסך ותשב עליו באמת כי אתה הוא דיין ומוכיח ויודע ועד וכותב וחותם וסופר ומונה ותזכור כל הנשכחו ותבטח את ספר הזיכרונות ומאליו ייקרא וחותם יד כל אדם בו ושופר גדול ייתקע וכל דממה דקה יישמע ומלאכים יחפי זון וכיל ורעדה יאוחזון ויאמרו הנה יום הדין לפקוד על צבא מרום בדין כי לא יזכו בעיניך בדין וכל באי עולם יעברו לפניך כבני מעות כבקרת רועה צונו תחת שבטו כן תעביר ותספור ותמנה Oh, 
יעברו. וכמה יברעו. מי יחיה ומי ומי ימות. מי וקיצו ומי לא וקיצו מי באש ומי במים מי בחרב ומי בחיה? מי ברעב? ומי בצמא? בראש השם מי בחניקה ומי בסקילה? מי ינוח ומי ינוח? מי ישלט ומי יתערף. מי ישלם ומי יתייסר? מי יהיה אני ומי יהיה אשר? מי ישפר? Thank 
בשמך כן תהילתך קשה לכעוס ונוח לרצות כי לא תחפוץ במות המת כי אם בשובו מדרכו וחיה ועד יום מותו תחכה לו אם ישוב מיד תקבלו אמת כי אתה הוא יוצרם ואתה יודע יצרם כי הם אנחנו בשר ודם אדם יסודו מעפר וסופו לעפר. בנפשו יביא לחמו משול לחרס הנשבר. כחציר יבש וחצי היץ נופל כצל עובר, וכענן כלה, וכרוח נושבת, וכאבק פורח, וכחלום יעוף. ואתה... a year on this day we do what some of us do every day and what our Muslim brothers and sisters do five times a day we get on our knees in supplication we kneel on the ground the gravity takes us away from our humility on our knees on our face bowing in front of infinity and mystery No matter what it is we think animates our lives and deaths. This is the Aleinu. We will recite now together. And if so you want to get on your knees in the ancient kneeling and bowing and prostration of our ancestors, find a way to do so. And if you just want to stand in your place and find a way to honor gravity, bow down. Any way you find works for you. Let us together kneel, bow to the ground. Oh, 
For those of you who were still here early in the morning, many hours ago, we began with our intention, Hareini Mekabel Alai at Mitzvat HaBoreh. I take upon myself the sacred intention, love others as you love self. And as we begin to close, we're saying the same intention in the plural. We take upon ourselves, Aleinu, to do what we can to love self, to love other. When someone comes to him and says, hey, buddy, I want to become a Jew and I want you to give me the entire Jewish thing on one foot right now, I'm ADD. And Hillel says, okay. Love others as you love yourself. The rest is details. Go learn. Welcome home. So this is all we need. If only this is all we needed to live our lives with integrity on this day, on all days, loving self, loving others, especially the ones that it is hard for us to love. So in this space of love, I invite us to stay present for another moment or two. Take a look around you at this temporary community For those of you watching us from home or hospital, for those of you in the overflow room, at this moment, we are connected 
having stood here and sat like kings and queens, having prayed and played, having wept and laughed, opened our Torah in our hearts, present here to each other on this day in which we get to seriously reflect and restart our lives. I hope you're fasting well for those of you who are. So here's what's coming up to help us make this day even more complete. We are me and we are we, and you can sit down if you want for a moment. So I want to invite Katie and Gary to come share with us the story of what brought you here today. And we're going to share a couple of announcements about the rest of the day. And then softly with a blessing, it will take us into the afternoon. My glasses, I'm sorry. Shana Tova, everyone. My name is Gary Freilich. This is my wife, Katie Workman. We were asked to talk to you a little bit today about what this experience has meant to us over the past few years that we've been here. I'm going to read a little bit. My, Katie is a much better speaker than I am, so I'm sure she's going <laughs> to go without notes. Maybe not. I was raised in a very different Jewish environment than Katie was. I went to Hebrew school three days per week at a suburban conservative shul in Massachusetts. My grandparents raised my mother in what would now be called modern orthodox. The high holidays consisted of a rambling all Hebrew service, most of which I spent outside pretending to be in the bathroom. It culminated in a 45 minute speech from the rabbi on some seemingly relevant topic of the day. My bar mitzvah was a three hour service, although I guess yeah. <laughs> I remember nothing from the day, though, however, except the six cross pens I got from well-wishers. What I will say is that all these years later, what has stayed with me all this time is best described by paraphrasing Maya Angelou, who said, in short, people may not remember the things you did or said, but will always remember the way they made you feel. The best one-word description of how Temple made me feel in those days was bored. The best two words I can think of is wicked board from Massachusetts. <laughs> and the three words would be very wicked board. As an adult looking back on it, um, what I couldn't understand then is the core of what hundreds of congregations around the country are wrestling with today. I could never understand what the relevancy of the 3,000 year old sacred text was to me or my mom or my dad or my three brothers. And I grew up in a very lax Jewish household. And um, my sister and I, we didn't go to Hebrew school. We weren't bat mitzvahed. Our Judaism was tempered with um, agnosticism. And most of it manifested itself in the form of latkes and brisket. And that was sort of the beginning and the end of our Judaism. It was at the dinner table on the high holy days. So when it came time, when our older son was 11, 12, heading to bar mitzvah time, we were trying to figure out what to do that would feel comfortable to both of us. And I've organized religion to me is, makes me feel itchy on a good day. And so we were trying to figure out what to do and some very good friends of ours had sons, Jack's friends, who were going into the Raising the Bar program, which, was, which is the storytelling, storytelling, lab shul, bar mitzvah program. And it was brand new, it was the second year. And we met with Amhai and we thought, why not? Let's take a flyer. So we did. And we, um, Naomi was our trainer. Naomi was Jack's trainer. And it was just amazing. It was, we were looking for that combination of something Gary would feel comfortable with, with the Torah being front and center, reading in Hebrew, tradition, ritual, and something I would feel comfortable with, which basically resembled something not that... I had seen um, Jacob the Bar Mitzvah boy on Saturday Night Live, and so I was sort of living in fear of, of that. 
And so um, Naomi and Jack crafted together the most beautiful service and you could hear them working together all year long and there was questions and answers and there was no script and there was nothing, nothing about it that felt cookie cutter. And they ended up with a service that was very reflective of our family, um, very personal, very unique, and now uh, Naomi is working with our 11 or 12 year old about to be bar mitzvah this December. So we're really happy about that. So I'll ask the same question that was asked last week, which is how many people in the room uh, have never been to a Lab Shill event before? There's a fair, fair number of you, and, and welcome. Is less this way? Yes. Okay. Um, for my part, I guess I didn't realize that for all my childhood, what it, and, and for most of what my adult life has been, I never knew the difference between what was law in Judaism and what was actually just tradition. And the confusion of the two is entirely what made me originally feel comfortable with what I thought Lab Shill was. As I said before, I grew up in a very traditional Massachusetts uh, conservative Jewish household. Was it some sort of weird movement designed to convince me to believe in something else than what I thought I knew what Judaism was? You see, to a person who grew up thinking they knew what Judaism was about, to suddenly find out that actually Judaism could be about questioning, and that thinking that things I thought were unassailable law without questioning whether they were in fact was a disservice to myself and to my family. All of that has been put into beautiful context by Amichai, by Naomi, and for all the rest of us in the Labshul family. And really, if you're looking for a reason why Labshul can, without a doubt, be a great fit for any kind of family, you need look no further than this group because we all come together from such different backgrounds and make up this beautiful community and beautiful family. Um, I have more. I'm going to leave it there, though. Uh, it's just been a wonderful experience for our family, coming from two different uh, Jewish backgrounds and have come together in, in what has become a beautiful community uh, for us all. And thank you very much for coming and, and considering us if you, haven't, uh, if you haven't been here before. Shana Tova. Well, there's time till Gil be mitzvah, but we're on it. The rest of the afternoon is as follows. Thank you, Katie and Gary, for being part of the family. It's been quite a journey. And we have a whole bunch of excited young be mitzvah teens. Started the year already. We had a Havdalah in the park just a few nights ago, which was great. So more about be mitzvah if you want to find out, talk to us. Um, we're going to end in just a few moments, shockingly on time, um, right? How did that happen? We're almost early. Um, at 2.30, Angel Grant is coming to lead us in a death meditation. Here's what I know about it. You lie on your back, and she walks us through a visual guided meditation of the end of our lives. I haven't done this particular one. I've done other. She's supposed to be amazing. She's very... Anyway, enough said. What else are you going to do this afternoon? 2.30 to 3.45, death meditation. Uh, it's instead of my teaching. I will give a bit of an introduction, but this is in line with our theme for this season of being mortal and looking death in the eye so we can live. At 4 o'clock, we are honored to be joined by ritual and faith leaders from Muslim, Christian, and Zen traditions as together we pray for peace and honor some of the teachings of His Holiness, Pope Francis, and welcome the Eid that's tomorrow celebrated in the Muslim world, Eid al-Adha, most important Muslim holiday of the year, on this holy day of ours. So please join us from 4 to 5.30, and then at 6, we're going to Knock, knock, knock on heaven's door for the last slot of the day. And we'll hear Shofar and break the fast at 7.30. For those of you who wanted to join us for the break fast upstairs, it will be happening. We'll have a very small one down here. And then the year continues. We go, get to go build Sukkot. So join us now for the oldest prayer that we have, the one that on this day in the Holy Temple in Jerusalem, Kohanim, priests, descendants of Aaron would lift up their hands and pray the people with. 
we are the priests we are the kohanim we get to bless each other so let us rise together and find someone's hand or shoulder if they will to hold on to so we're all connected Thank you.